Hello there, my sleepy nights. And tonight, we venture to a galaxy far, far away, where the mystical energy of the Force flows through all living things. We'll explore the ancient legends of the Jedi, the guardians of peace and justice who have captured the hearts and minds of generations. If these tales of cosmic adventure and timeless wisdom captivate you, please like, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts in the comments below. And you can now support us on Patreon, where you get exclusive access to our Spotify playlist and gain early access to all of our stories. But for now, Let's get cozy. Let the hum of a lightsaber and the gentle guidance of the Force lull you into a realm of wonder and imagination as we embark on an unforgettable journey through the myths and legends of the Star Wars Galaxy. shadows of the galaxy, where the echoes of ancient battles still linger, the tale of the Jedi Order unfolds with threads of myth and legend. Long before the rise of the Galactic Republic, in an era shrouded by the mists of time, the first seeds of the Jedi were sown on the enigmatic world of Tython, nestled deep within the galaxy's core. It was on this primal planet that the earliest Force-sensitive beings first heard the whispers of the Ashla, the light side of the Force. These primitive seers attuned to the ebb and flow of the cosmic energy that permeated all living things, sought to unravel the mysteries of this invisible power. They understood the Force as a source of wisdom, a well of strength from which to draw upon, and a means to manipulate the very fabric of reality itself. As the Jedi delve deeper into the secrets of the Force, they discovered ancient artifacts and ruins that hinted at the existence of a long-forgotten civilization, one that may have mastered the ways of the Force eons ago. Among these relics was a mysterious artifact known as the Tho Yor. The Thoyor were mysterious pyramidal vessels that heralded the dawn of their order in 36,453 BBY. These ancient ships, pulsing with the Force, drew scattered Force sensitives to Tython, uniting them in pursuit of understanding the cosmic energy. The Thoyor's legacy extended beyond their arrival, guiding the Jedi through millennia until the Force ignited, birthing the schism that led to the Jedi and Sith factions. Believed to be creations of the Celestials, God-like architects of the galaxy, the Thoyor were instrumental in sowing the seeds of Force study, hinting at a celestial intent to foster a unified understanding of the Force across the cosmos. Before converging on Tython, 
The Tho'yor resonated with the Chosen across various worlds. The Dai Bendu monks of Ando Prime to the Wookiee warriors of Kashyyyk. Each sensing their vessel's part in a greater destiny. Their collective journey to Tython marked the birth of a unified force-sensitive community. The Jedi's temples, built where the Thoyor rested, became sites of learning, each shaped by the wisdom and environment chosen by their respective Thoyor. This unity might have been the Celestial's design, aiming to create a singular, resilient beacon of the Force from the galaxy's dispersed sparks of potential. Whether by Celestial will or another cosmic force, the Thoyor's enigma remains a cornerstone of the Jedi's legacy, embodying the unity and diversity at the heart of their journey through the Force. But as the Jedi Order grew in strength and knowledge, so too did the forces of darkness that sought to corrupt and destroy them. The followers of the Bogan, the dark side of the Force, emerged from the shadows, said to have been led by a Jedi known as Zendor. Zendor and his disciples, the legions of Leto, believed that the true power of the Force lay in embracing one's passions and desires rather than the strict discipline and self-control advocated by the Jedi. It is with Zendor and the dark side of the Force that our first mythical tale begins. In the depths of the galaxy, where the echoes of ancient conflicts reverberate through the fabric of the Force, there is an old tale of division, ambition, and the eternal struggle between the light and the dark. This is the story of the first great schism. A time when the Jedi Order, once a beacon of unity and wisdom, found itself fractured by the allure of forbidden knowledge and the whispers of discontent. On the verdant world of Tython, nestled within the heart of the deep core, the Jedi had flourished there for millennia. They were the Jedi, a society of force wielders who had once found balance in harmony of the Ashla and the Bogan. But as the influence of the nascent Galactic Republic began to spread, the Jedi were forced to abandon their ancestral home and seek refuge on the distant planet of Osus. Among the Jedi of Osus was a young human woman named Arden Lin, a Teras Kazi master whose prowess in the ancient art of hand-to-hand -hand combat was matched only by her insatiable curiosity. Lin had grown disillusioned with the Jedi Order, believing that their true teachings had become stagnant and restrictive, stifling the true potential of the Force. But 
she was not alone in her discontent. Zendor, a charismatic and ambitious Jedi, had also begun to question the Order's rigid adherence to tradition. He yearned to explore the hidden depths of the Force, to unlock the secrets that the Jedi Council had deemed too dangerous to pursue. In defiance of the Order, Zendor left Osus to establish his own academy on the planet of Leto, where he could teach his followers the forbidden arts of the Force. Arden Lin, drawn to Zendor's vision and the promise of unfettered knowledge, joined him on Leto, along with a growing number of disaffected Jedi. They became known as the Legions of Leto, a brotherhood of Force users, united in their pursuit of power and their rejection of the Jedi Council's authority. Each new acolyte swore an oath of allegiance to Zendor, pledging to defend their new order and their right to explore the mysteries of the Force without restraint. As word of the legions of Leto spread, the Jedi Council grew increasingly alarmed. They branded Zendor and his followers as heretics, a threat to the stability of the Order and the peace of the Republic. War, it seemed, was inevitable. And so, the conflict followed as the Jedi and the legions of Leto clashed across the stars. Zendor, determined to expose what he believed to be the Jedi's hypocrisy, sought to sway the Republic to his cause. But his pleas fell on deaf ears. The Republic still in its infancy, was unwilling to intervene in what it saw as an internal Jedi matter. And so it is said that on the core world of Columbus, the tide of the war would turn, and in a climatic duel, Zendor faced off against a Jedi Master, Pina, a renowned warrior known as the Green Blade. Though Lin and Zendor once admired Pina for his independence and thirst for knowledge, they now found themselves on opposite sides of the conflict. In a whirlwind of flashing sabers, Pina and Zendor fought, their blades dancing in a deadly ballet until, at last, Zendor fell, his life extinguished by the green blade's saber. But Zendor's death did not bring an end to the war. The Jedi, determined to root out the heresy of the legends of Leto, launched a brutal campaign of extermination against Zendor's followers. On the planet of Leto, the Jedi and the legions clashed in a final desperate battle. Lin, her heart heavy 
unhappy with the loss of her beloved Zendor, rallied the surviving members of the legions and led them in a daring escape to the unknown regions beyond the reach of the Republic and the Jedi. However, Arden Lin could not evade the vengeance of the Jedi forever. It is said the Green Blade Jedi pursued her relentlessly, tracking her across the galaxy until he finally confronted her on the remote world of Urkala. In a furious duel, Lin channeled the dark side of the Force through an ancient artifact known as the Kashimur Talisman, unleashing a torrent of raw power born of rage, love, and despair. The talisman's dark energy, it is said, shattered the green blade saber and left the Jedi Master mortally wounded. But even in his final moments, Greenblade would not yield. With his last breath, he unleashed the power of Morekro, a rare force technique that could slow the body's functions to a crawl, trapping the victim in a state of suspended animation. Lin, caught in the grip of this force power, fell into a deep trance. Her body and mind locked in stasis for millennia to come. But the story of Arden Lin did not end with her entombment. It is said, 25,000 years later, during the reign of Emperor Palpatine, Lin was awakened from her stasis. Her mind, twisted by the Dark Lord of the Sith's machinations. Palpatine, ever the master manipulator, promised Lin the chance to resurrect her beloved Zendor in exchange for her service as one of his emperor's hands. Blinded by grief and the lure of Palpatine's false promises, Lin agreed, becoming an instrument of the Empire's will. But it is said when the truth of Palpatine's deception was finally revealed, Lin turned against her Sith Master, allaying herself with the renegade Grand Admiral Demetrius Zarin in a bid to overthrow the Emperor and seize control of the galaxy. Their plan as with so many others who dared to challenge Palpatine, was doomed to failure, and in the end, Lin was forced to flee. Her dreams of vengeance shattered, and her hope of reuniting with Zendor lost forever. The Emperor Enraged by Lin's betrayal, hunted her down, his agents scouring the galaxy for any trace of the rogue Emperor's hand. In the end, there was nowhere left for Lin to run. Palpatine's wrath 
was swift and terrible, and Arden Len, the last of the legions of Leto, was consumed by the fires of the dark side, a legacy reduced to ashes and whispers. This is the mythical tale of the first great schism, and it is one of ambition, forbidden knowledge, and the consequences of straying from the path of balance. It is a reminder of the eternal struggle between the light and the dark, and the danger that lies in the pursuit of power without wisdom. As we delve into the mysteries of the Force and the legends of the Jedi, let us remember the cautionary tale of Arden Lin and Zendor, and the price they paid for their defiance. For in the end, it is not the power we yield, but the choices we make that define our destiny in the Force. For a Jedi, the Force is not merely a tool or a weapon, but a constant companion, an ever-present guide that shapes their every thought and action. It is the very breath in their lungs, the beat of their hearts, the song that thrums through their veins. To be a Jedi is to swim in the currents of the Force, to surrender oneself to its ebb and flow, and to trust in its wisdom to light the way. In the hollowed halls of the Jedi Temple, where the wisdom of the ancients is passed down from master to apprentice, the young initiates learn of the true nature of the Force. They learn that it is a power beyond mere comprehension, a cosmic energy that binds the universe together in a web of interconnectedness. As Jedi Master Odin Ur once said, the Force is not a power to be wielded, but a presence to be felt. It is the very fabric of the universe, the warp and weft of all creations. And yet, for all its vastness and complexity, the Force is not a single monolithic entity. Rather, it expresses itself in two distinct aspects, each with its own unique qualities and manifestations. The first of these aspects is the living force, the raw and primal energy that suffuses all living things. It is a spark of life that animates the tiniest insect and the mightiest beast. The vital essence that courses through the veins of every plant and every tree. To feel the living force is to be attuned to the rhythms of life itself. To sense the ebb and flow of energy as it moves through the world around you. It 
is to walk through a lush and verdant jungle and feel the pulse of life in every leaf and branch. To hear the whispers of the forest and the rustling of the wind or the chirping of a bird. For a Jedi, the living force is the wellspring from which all their tangible abilities flow. It is the power that allows them to run faster, jump higher, and sends the world around them with uncanny clarity. It is the energy they channel when they reach out with their minds to move objects and to soothe the emotions of others. As the wise Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn once said, Feel, don't think, trust your instincts. The living force will guide you. But the living force is not the only aspect of the Force that a Jedi must contend with. There is another, vaster and more mysterious power that underlies the very fabric of the universe itself. This is the unifying Force, the cosmic energy binds the stars and galaxies together in an intricate dance of cause and effect. It is the rippling surface of space and time, the eternal and unchanging fabric that underlies all of creation. To commune with the unifying force is to step beyond the boundaries of one's mortal existence, to glimpse the infinite and the eternal. It is to walk the paths of the past and the future, to see the intricate web of destiny that connects all things. As an ancient Jedi prophecy says, the Force is all things and in all things. It is the bridge between worlds, the light in the darkness, the calm in the storm. But to truly understand the unifying Force, A Jedi must first learn to let go of their attachments and their desires. They must learn to surrender themselves to the will of the Force, to trust in its guidance and its wisdom. For the path of the Jedi is not an easy one, and the temptations of the dark side are ever-present. As the fallen Jedi Darth Raven once warned, the dark side is not stronger, quicker, or more seductive. It is simply easier, and that is why it will always be a constant temptation. To resist the lure of the dark side, a Jedi must cultivate a deep an abiding connection to the Force. They must learn to quiet their minds and open their hearts to listen for the whispers of the Force in the stillness of their souls. As Jedi Master Yoda once said, through the Force, things you will see, other places, the future. The past, old friends, long gone. And indeed, it is said that the most powerful Jedi, 
those who have truly mastered the ways and the force are able to transcend even the boundaries of death itself. They become one with the force, the consciousness merging with the infinite and the eternal. But for all their power and all their wisdom, the Jedi are not infallible. They are still mortal beings, subject to the same flaws and weaknesses as any other. And throughout their long and storied history, there have been those among them who have fallen to the dark side, who have been seduced by the lure of power and ambition. The story of the Jedi is not just a story of individual heroes and villains, of great battles and epic quests. It is a story of the eternal struggle between the light and the dark, of the enduring power of hope and faith in the face of adversity. As the ancient Jedi code says, there is no emotion, there is peace. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. There is no passion, there is serenity. There is no chaos, there is harmony. There is no death, there is the force. These are words that guide the Jedi, the principles that shape their every action and thought. And as long as there are those who hold true to these teachings, as long as there are those who trust in the wisdom of the Force, the light of the Jedi will never be extinguished. For the Force is eternal, and its power knows no bounds. And those who listen to its call, who learn to surrender themselves to its currents, will find that they are never truly alone. This next tale is an ancient myth passed down from both ancient Sith and ancient Jedi. In the dawn of time, before the rise of the Galactic Republic, the galaxy was a vast and uncharted expanse, a canvas of infinite darkness punctuated by the faint glimmer of distant stars. In this primordial epoch, the Force, the eternal energy that binds all living things, existed in a state of perfect harmony, a delicate balance between the light and the shadow, neither aspect dominating the other. The Force, in its wisdom, called out to the inhabitants of the galaxy, drawing them to its luminous presence and teaching them the ways of peace, compassion and healing. These first adherents of the Force's light side became the galaxy's earliest champions of justice. 
dedicating themselves to maintaining the delicate balance that allowed life to flourish across the stars. They traveled the length and breadth of the galaxy, guided by the gentle whispers of the Force, seeking out those who were in need of their aid. With each act of kindness, each gesture of compassion, they strengthened the light side of the Force, weaving a tapestry of harmony that stretched from one end of the galaxy to the other. Yet, as with all things in the universe, where there is light, there must also be shadow. The Force's dark side, seductive and powerful, began to whisper to those whose hearts were filled with ambition and a craving for power. It offered them strength to bend the will of others to their own desires, to dominate and control the destiny of the galaxy. These individuals, tempted by the promises of the dark side, learned to wield its power, twisting the force to their own ends. As the influence of the dark side grew, the balance of the force began to shift, tipping ever more towards the shadow. The once peaceful galaxy was plunged into an age of conflict and strife, as the adherents of the light and the disciples of the dark clashed in a struggle that threatened to tear the very fabric of reality asunder. Sensing the growing imbalance and the destruction it wrought. A wise and powerful figure, known only as the ancient sage, emerged from the mists of legend. The sage had long studied the ways of the Force, seeking to understand its deepest mysteries and the delicate balance that held the galaxy together. Determined to restore harmony to the Force and teach a crucial lesson to all those sensitive to its presence. The ancient sage gathered the Force users from across the galaxy, bringing them to a tranquil world untouched by the ravages of conflict. There, Amidst the serene beauty of nature, the sage led them to a small pool of still water. Its surface, a perfect mirror reflecting the vast expanse of the sky above. Behold, the sage said, a voice gentle yet filled with an undeniable authority. The Force, in its purest essence, is like this pool, calm, serene, and perfectly balanced. Only when the light and the shadow exist in harmony can the Force truly be at peace? To demonstrate the wisdom of these words, the ancient sage reached down and picked up a small pebble from the shore of the pool. With a simple flick of their wrist, the sage cast the pebble into the center of the still water 
watching as it broke the surface with a soft splash. Instantly, the once perfect reflection of the sky above was shattered. Replaced by a chaos of ripples and distortions that spread outward from the point of impact. The image of the sky became warped and twisted, its beauty lost in the turbulence of the water. This is what happens when one aspect of the force dominates over the other, Sage explained their eyes fixed on the churning water. When the light grows too strong, unchecked by the shadow, it becomes blinding, arrogant, and complacent. It loses its way, forgetting the very balance that gives it purpose. As the ripples began to subside, The ancient sage continued, and when the shadow grows too powerful, unopposed by the light, it becomes cruel, destructive, and all-consuming. It seeks only to dominate, to blend all of life to its will, until nothing remains but darkness and despair. The assembled force users watched in silence as the last of the ripples faded away, the surface of the pool once again becoming a perfect mirror, reflecting the luminous sky above. In that moment, They understood the true meaning of the sage's words, the profound wisdom that lay at the heart of the force itself. Only together, in balance, can the light and the shadow create a true reflection of harmony, the ancient sage said their voice filled with a quiet intensity. It is not through the dominance of one aspect over the other, but through the understanding and respect of the delicate equilibrium between them, that true peace can be achieved. This lesson of the ancient sage was spread throughout the galaxy, passed down from master to student, from generation to generation. In the beginning, Before the Jedi Order had taken shape, the four sensitive beings who would become the first Jedi wielded simple metal blades. These archaic weapons, imbued with the raw power of the Force, were the first glimmering step on the path that would lead to the creation of the lightsaber. As the Jedi grew in wisdom and understanding, they began to refine their weapons, seeking a more elegant and sophisticated means of channeling the Force in combat. And so, in the mists of ancient history, the first Proto lightsabers were born. These early lightsabers were crude and unstable. 
powered by unwieldy battery packs and connected by a tangle of wires and cables. But even in their imperfection, they represented a quantum leap forward in the evolution of the Jedi's signature weapon. It was not until the discovery of the kyber crystals that the lightsaber truly came into its own. These rare and powerful gems, imbued with the very essence of the Force, became the heart and soul of the lightsaber. Each kyber crystal is unique, attuned to the Force in its own special way. And when a Jedi finds their crystal, it is said that the crystal chooses them, forging a bond that will last a lifetime. The process of constructing a lightsaber is a sacred ritual, a rite of passage that every Jedi must undergo. In the depths of the Jedi Temple, in the chamber of the Kyber, the young Padawans meditate on the Force, allowing its currents to guide their hands as they assemble their weapons. As an ancient Jedi Master once said, the lightsaber is not a simple weapon, it is an extension of the Jedi's very being a reflection of their connection to the Force. And indeed, the color of a Jedi's lightsaber blade is a window into their soul, a manifestation of their deepest nature and identity. Blue, the color of the Guardian, the Jedi who focuses on martial prowess and physical combat. Green, the color of the Consular, the Jedi who seeks to resolve conflicts through diplomacy and wisdom. But there are other colors as well, each with its own special meaning. Yellow is the color of the Sentinel, the Jedi who walks the line between the light and the dark. Purple is the color of the rare and powerful Jedi who have learned to balance the two sides of the Force within themselves. And then, there are the Sith, the ancient enemies of the Jedi who wield lightsabers of crimson red. These weapons powered by synthetic kyber crystals, have been twisted and corrupted by the dark side, and are a symbol of the Sith's lust for power and domination. But why were lightsabers created in the first place? What drove the Jedi to seek out such a powerful and sophisticated weapon? The answer, as with so many things in the galaxy, is shrouded in myth and legend. Some say that the lightsabers were a gift from the Force itself, bestowed upon the Jedi as a symbol of their sacred duty to protect the innocent and uphold justice. Others believe that lightsabers were created in response to a great and terrible threat a dark power that threatened to engulf the galaxy in shadow. According to this legend, the first Jedi Master, a wise and powerful being known only as the Prime Jedi, foresaw the coming of darkness and knew that the Jedi would need a weapon capable of standing against it. And so, in a great and secret forge hidden deep within the heart of a dying star, 
the Prime Jedi created the first lightsaber was a thing of beauty and terror, a blade of pure energy that could cut through any material and deflect any attack. But the lightsaber is more than just a weapon. It is a tool of peace and justice, a means of defending the innocent and upholding the law. As an old Jedi master once said, the best blades are kept in their sheaths. But the creation of a lightsaber is no simple task. No mere assembly of components and wires. It is a sacred ritual. A rite of passage that every Jedi must undergo. A trial which will forge them in the crucible of the Force and shape the destiny of the galaxy itself. The process begins with a gathering, a collection of the essential elements that will give life to the blade, the hand grip, the emitter matrix, the lens assembly, which is a delicate instrument of precision honed to perfection by skilled hands of the temple's artisans, the power cell, a reservoir of life and energy pulsing with the heartbeat of the force itself, and the crystal, the very soul of the lightsaber a living conduit of the Jedi's will and purpose. Each component must be chosen with the utmost care, guided by the whispers of the Force. A Padawan must learn to listen to the subtle currents of energy that flow through all things, to attune themselves to the hidden depths of the universe. Only then can they hope to select the elements that will become an extension of their very being, a reflection of their deepest nature. But the gathering is only the beginning, a prelude to the true test that awaits. For to create a lightsaber, a Padawan must undertake a vision quest a journey in the very heart of the Force itself. And there is no place more suited to this sacred task than the crystal caves of Elam. Elam, a world of ice and snow, a place of secrets and mysteries, where the Force flows like a river of light beneath the frozen surface. It is here that the Jedi come, seeking crystals that will power their blades. In the depths of the caves, a Padawan must face themselves, must confront the shadows that lurk within their own heart. They must meditate, They must surrender themselves to the will of the Force, letting it guide them to the crystal that is meant for them alone. It is a test of faith, a trial of the spirit, a crucible in which the true nature of the Jedi is revealed As they delve deeper into the caves, the Padawan must recite the ancient mantra, the words that have been passed down from master to apprentice since the dawn of the Jedi Order, the words that speak of the unity of all things, of the interconnectedness of the crystal, the blade, 
and the Jedi themselves. The crystal is the heart of the blade. The heart is the crystal of the Jedi. The Jedi is the crystal of the Force. The Force is the blade of the heart. All are intertwined. The crystal, the blade, the Jedi. We are one. It is a prayer, a meditation, a declaration of faith and purpose. And as the words echo through the caverns, as they resonate with the very essence of the Force itself, the Padawan begins to understand the true meaning of their journey. For the creation of a lightsaber is not simply a test of skill or knowledge, but a test of the very soul. A moment of transformation, point of no return, where the Padawan must confront the darkness within themselves and emerge as a true Jedi, servant of the light. And so, with the crystal in hand, the Padawan returns to the temple to the final stage of their trial. In a chamber of silence and solitude, they must assemble the components of their blade, must fuse them together on a molecular level through the precise application of the force. It is a task that requires absolute focus, the clarity of mind and purpose that can be achieved only through the deepest meditation. The slightest error, the tiniest misalignment, the saber may explode upon activation, but if the Padawan succeeds, they can bring the disparate elements into harmony, into a perfect unity of form and function. Then, they will have created something more than just a weapon. They will have forged the symbol of their own identity, a reflection of their innermost being, a tool of justice and peace will serve them for a lifetime. This next tale is an old myth and tells us of an interesting lightsaber that was forged both with the light and the dark. In the farthest reaches of the galaxy, on a desolate moon orbiting the forgotten world of Moor, an ancient Sith talisman lay hidden within the depths of an obsidian stone chamber. The air within the chamber was thick with the oppressive weight of the dark side, a palpable malevolence that seemed to seep from the very walls themselves. Jedi Master Raf Naran stood at the chamber's entrance. 
his body tense with anticipation and dread. He had followed the trail of the talisman across the vast expanse of the outer rim. Guided by whispers and rumors of its immense power. And now, as he stood on the threshold of his quest, he could feel the full force of the talisman's sinister energy washing over him like a tidal wave of darkness. Talisman pulsed with a sickening crimson glow, its light casting twisted shadows across the chamber's uneven walls. It was as if the very heart of the dark side had been given physical form, a tangible manifestation of the corruption and decay that lay at the core of the Sith's teachings. As Rav stepped into the chamber, he could feel the talisman's presence clawing at the edges of his mind, whispering seductive promises of power and domination. He could sense the tormented spirits trapped within the cracked Kuiper crystal at the talisman's heart. Their anguish wails echoing through the forest like a chorus of the damned. The Jedi Master knew that he was treading on dangerous ground. The dark side was strong here. Its influence permeating every atom of the moon's surface. The air itself seemed to carry the weight of centuries of suffering and despair. As if the very planet was alive with the echoes of the Sith's ancient atrocities. But Rav was no ordinary Jedi. He was a maverick. A warrior who had always walked the line between the light and the dark. He had spent his life studying the forbidden teachings of the Sith. Seeking to understand the nature of their power and the depths of their corruption. And now, as he stood before the talisman, he knew that he could not ignore the potential it represented. With a deep breath, Rav extended his senses towards the talisman, his mind probing the depths of its dark energy. He could feel the kyber crystal at its heart, pulsing with a sickening rhythm that seemed to match the beating of his own heart. The crystal was cracked and tainted, its once pure structure corrupted by the Sith's dark rituals and the suffering souls trapped within. Removing the crystal would be a perilous task, Rav knew. The slightest misstep could unleash the full force of the talisman's power, consuming him utterly and damning his soul to an eternity of torment. This Jedi Master was determined to see his mission through to the end, no matter the cost. 
with a deft application of his lightsaber. Rav expertly severed the crystal from its profane housing. The moment the blade made contact, the talisman exploded with a burst of dark energy, sending waves of searing pain through the Jedi's body. The spectral energies within the crystal lashed out, their ghostly fingers clawing at Rav's mind and soul. But the Jedi was ready, drawing on the full power of the Force. He erected a shield of pure light around himself, pushing back against the onslaught of darkness. He could feel the talisman's power straining against his defenses, seeking to break through and consume him entirely. For a long moment, the two forces remained locked in a battle of wills, the light and the dark raging against each other like two titans locked in an eternal struggle. But slowly, gradually, Rav began to gain the upper hand. His connection to the Force was strong, his will unbreakable. With a final, decisive push, he severed the last of the talisman's hold on the crystal, wrenching it free from its dark prison. The crystal pulsed in his hand, its surface cracked and pitted from centuries of exposure to the Sith's dark rituals. But even in its damaged state, Raf could sense the potential within. The power to turn the tide of the war against the Sith and bring balance to the Force. But the crystal was far from purified. The taint of the dark side still clung to it like a noxious fog, threatening to corrupt any who dare to wield its power. If Raz was to use the crystal for good, he would need to cleanse it of the Sith's influence. A task that would require all of his skill and strength. For seventeen cycles of the moon, Rav labored over the crystal, pouring every ounce of his being into the purification process. He drew on the most obscure techniques of the Jedi Order, channeling the light side of the Force through the crystal with a precision and focus that bordered on the superhuman. Day and night, he worked tirelessly, his mind and body pushed to the very limits of endurance. The process was agonizing, the crystal's dark energies fighting him every step of the way, but slowly, gradually, He could feel the light beginning to take hold. The crystal structure shifting and changing under the weight of his will. When at last, the process was complete. The crystal pulsed with a new energy. A 
swirling vortex of light and dark that seemed to shift and change with every moment passing. It was as if the crystal itself was a microcosm of the Force, a living embodiment of the eternal struggle between good and evil. From this transformed heart, Rav created a new lightsaber, unlike any the galaxy had ever seen. Its blade shimmered with an otherworldly light, shifting between shades of purest white and deepest crimson in a mesmerizing dance of color. When ignited, the saber seemed to hum with a power that went beyond mere technology. A power that spoke of the force itself made manifest. In the hands of its creator, the saber was a thing of terrible beauty. A weapon that could strike fear into the hearts of the darkest Sith. Even as it inspired hope in the most downtrodden of the galaxy's oppressed. It was a symbol of the Jedi's unyielding commitment to the light. A beacon of hope in a galaxy consumed by darkness. And when Rav finally took the saber into battle, it proved to be a weapon without equal. The Sith recoiled before its blazing light, their powers weakened and diminished in the face of its righteous fury. And in the end, the saber would serve as a testament to the enduring power of the Jedi Way, a shining example of what could be achieved when one dedicated themselves wholly to the service of the greater good. And as for Rav Naran, it would forever stand as a reminder of the lengths he had gone, in order to bring a measure of peace and justice to a galaxy in desperate need of both. The Jedi are taught to meditate at every opportunity to seize even the briefest moments of stillness and quiet, to center themselves and renew their connection to the living energy that surrounds them. In the early days of their training, the initiates are expected to meditate five times a day, but even this is not enough. They must learn to carry the practice with them always, to find the stillness within themselves, even in the midst of chaos and turmoil. When they're waiting outside a training chamber, or caught in the midst of a heated debate, the Jedi must always be ready to step back from the world and find their center in the Force. As they progress in their training, the Jedi learn to achieve ever deeper states of meditation, each one a portal to a new level of understanding and power. 
in the emptiness of empty meditation. They learn to let go of their emotions and attachments. To step back from the world and see it with the clear eyes of the force. In the focused intensity of moving meditation, they learn to channel their energy and attention into a single task. To find the flow of the force, even in the most mundane of activities. But it is in the transcendent heights of rising meditation that the Jedi truly begin to glimpse the full scope of their potential. In this state, they feel their consciousness expand beyond the limits of their physical form until they are one with the Force itself. They may find themselves levitating off the ground or they may hear the whispers of the unifying force, the great cosmic melody that sings past, present and future, all at once. For those who struggle to find their way in meditation, the Jedi Temple offers many aids and resources. There are meditation chambers that shut out all external stimuli, allowing the Jedi to focus entirely on their inner world. And there is the room of a thousand fountains, where the gentle sound of falling water can soothe even the most turbulent of mind. But, ultimately, the path to self-discipline and mastery is one that each Jedi must walk alone. It is a journey of self-discovery and self-transcendence, a quest to find the stillness at the heart of the storm and the light at the center of the darkness. It is a path that demands patience, humility, and an unwavering commitment to the ways of the Force. The path of a Padawan is one of profound growth and self-discovery, a time when the seeds planted in the early days of training begin to blossom into true mastery of the Force. As young Jedi shed the mantle of the Initiate and step into the role of the Apprentice, they find themselves immersed in a world of new challenges and opportunities. A world where the discipline of sense takes center stage. For the Padawan, the art of sense is not merely an extension of the control they have honed in their early years, but a gateway to a deeper, more profound understanding of the living force and their place within it. As they extend their perceptions beyond the confines of their own bodies and minds, they begin to feel the pulse of the universe itself. This awakening is a moment of profound revelation, a breakthrough that can shake the very foundations of a Padawan's understanding. Suddenly, the force is no longer an abstract concept or a distant ideal, but a tangible, living presence that suffuses every aspect of their being. It is as natural 
and instinctive as breathing, as much a part of them as their own heartbeat. With this newfound awareness comes a host of new abilities and techniques, each one a key to unlocking the full potential of the living force. The most basic of these is life detection, the ability to sense the presence and location of living beings even at great distances. For the Padawan, this skill is more than just a useful tool. It is a constant reminder of the interconnectedness of all life. As they hone their abilities, the Padawan may begin to notice subtle variations in the life signatures they detect. Each one a unique and distinct flavor that reflects the individual's emotional state and intentions. A warm, reassuring glow might indicate the presence of a trusted friend or ally, while a cold, malevolent aura could signal the approach of an enemy or a source of danger. But of all the bonds that a Padawan may forge through the discipline of sense, none is more profound or enduring than the one they share with their master. This connection, forged in the crucible of shared experience and mutual trust, is a constant reminder of the power and potential of the Force, a shining example of what is possible when two minds and hearts are truly attuned to one another. As the Padawan continues to explore the mysteries of sense, they may find themselves drawn to the art of Tactus Otium, or Sense Force. The ability to perceive the totality of the living force in all of its intricate complexity. This skill requires a deep and abiding sense of calm, a willingness to let go of one's individual perspective and open up oneself to the larger patterns and currents that flow through the universe. To practice this ability, the Padawan must learn to relax their perceptions to let the boundaries between themselves and the world around them blur and dissolve. In time, the Force will reveal itself in all its glory, a vast and intricate tapestry of life and energy that stretches across the cosmos. Through this heightened awareness, the Padawan may begin to sense the health and vitality of entire ecosystems, to detect the presence of dark side energies or other malevolent forces that threaten the balance of the Force. But the discipline of sense is not limited to the perception of external phenomena alone. It can also be used to enhance and augment the Padawan's own natural senses, granting them abilities that far exceed the limits of their physical bodies. This application of the Force is known as magnifying the senses, and it is a skill that many Padawans struggle to master. The key to success in this area 
lies in letting go of one's preconceptions and expectations. For those who need extra guidance, the practice of force-boosted hearing can be a powerful tool, a way to focus the mind and attune oneself to the subtle vibrations and energies that permeate the world around them. By meditating in a quiet space, with all other senses closed down, the Padawan can learn to track the movements of a remote training device, following its gentle hum as it travels farther and farther away. In time, they may be surprised to find that their hearing has grown so acute that they can detect the remote's presence even when it is far beyond the range of their physical ears. This same principle can be applied to all of the Padawan senses, from sight to smell to taste and beyond. For those species that rely on more exotic forms of perception, such as air pressure or electromagnetic fields, this exercise can be adapted to suit their unique needs and abilities. But the true power of sense lies not just in the enhancement of individual perceptions, but in the ability to merge and combine them into new and unexpected ways. This is the essence of projective telepathy, a technique that blends the perceptual abilities of sense with the more direct and forceful discipline of alter. Through projective telepathy, the Padawan can literally project their thoughts and feelings into the mind of another, conveying messages and warnings with a clarity and precision that words alone could never match. This skill is not an easy one to master, and even some of the most accomplished Jedi Masters struggle to achieve it consistently. For those beings who are naturally gifted in the art of telepathy, this ability may come more easily. A reflection of their innate connection to the Force and the minds of those around them. But for all Padawans, regardless of their species or background, the key to success lies in practice, patience, and a deep and abiding trust in the wisdom of the Force. Perhaps the most enigmatic and mysterious of all sensibilities is that of post-cognition, the power to perceive events and experiences that have already transpired. This skill draws not on the living force, but on the vast and inscrutable depths of the unifying force. To access this power, the Padawan must learn to let go of their individual perspective and open themselves up to the larger flow of the force to the endless stream of cause and effect that shapes the destiny of the galaxy. Through the technique of psychometry, they can attune themselves to the residual energies that linger in objects and places, reading the echoes of the past that are imprinted on the very fabric of the universe. This ability is not the same as simple memory recall, 
for the Jedi need not have been present at the event in question to perceive it through the lens of the Force. Instead, they are drawing on the Force's own vast and incomprehensible memory, tapping into the collective unconscious of the galaxy itself. As the Padawan grows and develops in their understanding of sense, they may find their perceptions of the world around them begin to change in profound and unexpected ways. Colors may seem brighter, sounds may grow clearer and more distinct. The very air itself may seem to hum with the energy of the living force. Some can have unique senses that no other Jedi's can possess. There is a mythical tale of a Padawan that I would like to share with you now. A Padawan who possessed very special senses indeed. She set foot in the temple, and she struggled to keep up with her fellow initiates. Her movements were clumsy and awkward, her lightsaber techniques sloppy and unrefined. In the sparring chambers, she was often the first to fall. Her body bruised and battered by the skilled attacks of her peers. But what room she lacked in physical prowess, she more than made up for in her connection to the Force. Her senses were alive in ways that few could comprehend tuned to the subtlest fluctuations in energy that suffused the world around her. For Runchi, the Force was not just a tool or a weapon, but a way of experiencing and living in the world in its infinite complexity. When she closed her eyes and reached out in her mind, she could see the temple in ways that no one else could. A shimmering world of light and sound and motion that danced before her inner eye. She could feel the heat of a thousand tiny flames in the meditation chambers each one a beacon of focus and clarity in the Force. She could hear the whispered prayers of Jedi Masters as they knelt before the ancient statues of the Temple's founders, their voices echoing through the halls like a chorus of gentle rain. And when she walked the streets of Coruscant, The vibrant energy of the city planet washed over her like a tidal wave. A cacophony of life 
and activity that threaten to overwhelm our senses. But even in the midst of the chaos, Munchi could pick out the individual threads that wove together to form the larger pattern. She could feel the force flowing through every living being like a river of light. It was this unique gift, this extraordinary sensitivity to the force, that would ultimately prove to be Runchi's greatest strength. For even as she struggled to keep up with her fellow initiates in the physical realm, she was honing her skills in ways that none of them could imagine. Learning to trust in the guidance of the Force and the wisdom of her own intuition. And so, it is said that when dark times came, when a Jedi turned to the shadows, and threatened to bring ruin to the temple and all who dwelt within it. It was the young initiate Runchi who stood against the tide, her senses alive with the warning signs of impending danger. She could feel the subtle disturbances in the force the ripples of darkness that emanated from the fallen Jedi like a noxious cloud. She could taste the fear and anger that clung to him like a second skin, could hear the whispers of the dark side that echoed in his every word and deed. And so, it is said, when the moment of truth arrived, and the fallen Jedi made his move, it was Runchi who stepped forward, her lightsaber blazing with the purest light of the Force. In the sparring chambers where she had once been the first to fall, she now stood tall and proud, her movements fluid and graceful as she danced around her opponent's attacks. With each passing moment, Runchi's connection to the Force grew stronger, her senses expanding outward until she could feel the very fabric of the universe itself. She could see the threads of destiny that bound them all together, could feel the will of the Force guiding her every step and every strike. And when the final blow was struck, the fallen Jedi lay defeated at her feet. Runchi knew that she had found her true calling. That the Force had chosen her for a purpose greater than she had ever imagined. And so the tale of Runchi was told in the temples throughout time, a way to reinforce the idea that you do not have to be the best with a lightsaber, but trust in the force to be your guide, and you can succeed. As the ancient tales of the Jedi fade into the mists of time, their legacy endures, a beacon of hope and inspiration for all those who would follow in their footsteps. Through the long centuries of peace and the dark years of war, through the rise and fall of empires, the endless cycle of life and death, the Jedi have remained a constant presence, a guardian of the light in a galaxy too often consumed by darkness. And now, as a new generation of Jedi takes up the mantle of the Order, 
as young initiates learn the ways of the Force and begin their own journey on the path of light. The future of the galaxy rests in their hands. Let us go forth and, with courage and conviction, with faith in the Force and in ourselves, let us take up the lightsaber and the mantle of the Jedi. Let us become the guardians of peace and justice the galaxy so desperately needs. And may the Force be with us all, now and always, as we walk the path of the light and the way of the Jedi.